Woo-hoo-hoo-hoo-hoo-hoo. Yes, sir. How are you, my great, boy? Guys. I'm good. Thanks for you, buddy. <laughs> oh, great, my man. Great to chat to you. How's everything going? No, but it's it's even better for you and your giggle, man. I flip and love your <laughs> giggle, man. <laughs> Always, but on our oh, podcasts man. and these introductions, on our audio messages each day that we send to each other, I always get a giggle, a great giggle, and I'm always happy when I hear that. So, <laughs> thank oh, you. Oh, man. Well, we, likewise, brother, brother, the feeling is mutual, and we're so glad to be with everyone today, and we get to unpack a great conversation that we had with um, Mac Prezina and just a little bit um, about... Mac and she's actually a professional coach and human builder and her keys to success is helping others embrace their vulnerabilities, push their limits and relish in the process of constant evolution and she certainly sticks to those things and she uses those kind of tools in her own life that's for sure and one of the main things that we just noticed when we first spoke to Mac is that she's just totally unabashedly herself she's just high energy she smiles a lot and she's just this amazing energy to be around and the interesting thing is that she's actually been told before from people that she's like smiling too much she's got her smile is too big she's too loud and it's quite interesting how you know that's something to aspire to for some people but other people find it really difficult to be around and I think just the message there is just like when you just really embracing you who you are like people will gravitate to that anyway like and you and the right people that you want to be around will gravitate towards you and it's kind of interesting because we're all like this patchwork of things that make us who we are and this the sooner we start to push stuff away the, the, the sooner we'll start to become unhappy and try and conform to everyone else so it's quite important to just understand that you know the good, bad and ugly aspects of us are really what make us who we are. And it's uniquely you. And so really try and like, just, you know, take bold steps and be you and the right people will come towards you. Won't they Gareth? Yeah. 100% Craig. And, and you, you mentioned something about a patchwork of experiences. And, you know, one of those things is around the, the internal dialogue that we say to ourselves, literally every single day, probably almost every second of the day, most of us are kind of talking to ourselves, right? And we're we're telling ourselves these stories day in and day out. And ultimately, that story adds up to being something either hugely positive or hugely negative. So, and this can lead to issues around, you know, self-belief being negative, that's for sure, you know, and I think uh, we, we must be really conscious of this communication that we're having with ourselves um, because it does add up over time, you know, and it, it's a really important thing to be conscious of. Um, and I think as a result of that, uh, in a way, this kind of like shadow slowly starts building up, doesn't it, Craig? And then it's something that she mentioned in the chat, which was rather profound, wasn't it? Totally, Gareth. And I think it's an important topic for people to discuss, you know, and she had a great metaphor um, or she used this metaphor of like a shadow boxer and uh, the shadow boxer is like sparring. Uh, There's no one actually there. It's just yourself and you, you having this mental game and we, and she sort of framed it in a, in a real positive sense is that this is so important to do is to shine that light on the things that you might not like about yourself and, and maybe try to have a dance with that, with that shadow and incorporate it into who you are. And it's, you know, some people think it gets a bit esoteric, but you know, we, we stuff stuff away that we don't like in our lives, our, some of our thoughts and our um, actions and things. And, and we realize that um, the more we push those away, the more that, that they manifest in some other negative way, the more we do that. And so it's so important to actually spend some time embracing all these things. And, um, you know, what often happens is that there's a status quo in society and we feel like the thoughts and the actions that we've done or maybe don't fit into that. So we try and, we try and shy away from it and at the end of the day um you know you have to also sometimes understand what are the things that really make you tick and not just try and conform the whole time because if you force yourself into some kind of box that's never going to be healthy at, and for yourself and for those around you because at some stage it sort of comes out and the whole point with the with you know looking at one shadow is like it also gives you some kind of contrast you know ellen watts ellen watts talks about you know when there's no white without black, there's no black without white, you know, the one basically gives you 
the idea of the other and they're always intrinsically linked. So when we look at the stuff that we maybe don't like about ourselves, we can either change it or even just knowing that it's there, we can contrast that with all the good things in our lives too. And, and just understand that it's all part of us. And if we actually spend some time with it, we can evolve and change and, and um, morph into the person that we kind of really want to be here. Yeah, for sure, Craig. And, and that just reminds me about something. I was actually listening to this podcast uh, this week, actually, from a previous guest of ours, uh, Kelsey Abbott. Um, and she's really into this thing called human design. And, and I've become really interested in it myself. And, and she was just giving kind of like a brief introductory overview into terms of the different types of energy and different types of um, people that, that we are as, as, uh, as human design goes. And uh, she just had a really nice way of, of saying things without going sort of into what human design is. She was just like, your soul has basically chosen you as a person, right? And it has these sort of certain traits to it. Um, and, and that's what you sort of have to deal with on a day-to-day -day basis. And some of it you might not like, but you know what? It's okay, actually, to, to be a certain type of person. So give yourself permission, you know, like sometimes that shadow, just listen to it and just enjoy it. And like you said, just dance with it. It's okay to, to be a certain type of person. You know, we're not all the same and we're all unique and we must really, really embrace that uniqueness. And I thought it was really, really, really um, such a fascinating and interesting podcast and just a nice way to kind of like be accepting of who we are as people. Um, and then another thing, Craig, which, which came out in our podcast uh, with Mac and you brought it up and, and I thought it was, was super fascinating is around... Um, that we are like this family of personalities, each and every single one of us, you know, like we, we have this sort of like, say the analytical Gareth and then the sort of sporty Gareth and the, the angry Gareth and the moody mm. Gareth and the, you know, the, the, all these kind of like little personalities that, that make us up. And that's okay too. you like, that's just who we are. You know what I mean? But then to take it a step further, which um, another guest of ours and good mates of ours, uh, Gareth Pickering, he basically, he said like to give his personalities names. And I thought, wow, that's really, really interesting, you know, and we and you and I spoke about this uh, as well in depth. Um, and it's just like, it's cool. You know what I mean? So like, so you almost give yourself permission to be that personality for the day, or you say, okay, this personality, I see you, I've probably been neglecting you a little bit. I need to actually go and work on you a little bit sort of thing. So it's just a really cool way of kind of just once again, I think being accepting um, for, for who you are, you know, and um, you know, it's just, just, just a cool tool to have in your box uh, when it comes to kind of just say, believing in yourself and um, you know, just uh, being thankful and grateful for everything that you have. Um, and another thing, which, which is we, we touched in on the podcast was around um, how, there's this kind of memory that's generational and it's passed on to us, uh, you know, when we're, when we're born and these sort of things, which was really interesting, eh, Greg? Totally, Gareth. And, uh, you know, I really like what you said there, just about how it can, it can be such a positive tool that we can use. And, and exactly what you're saying now, you know, part of that is understanding that some of the genetics that we have in our body and some of the cellular and, and genetic memory and uh, that we've, received is part of us too and so we can have traits that may, may seem a bit strange to us because they're actually sort of been passed on in through our genes and our upbringing as we we heard about throughout with our chat with um, Bruce Lipton and but then there's this, always this interesting component to that of like epigenetics like we have to understand we've got these parts to us and it's definitely ingrained in us but once we start to identify them and put a name to them, we can actually start to see when we, when these person personality types sort of come out and we can, if we, if we don't like it, we can start to slowly change those things and, and change the way we perceive things. And then through that, it actually starts to change your uh, genetic profile and down the track because of epigenetics. And there's a, there's a, there's a sort of a concept in, in genetics called Lamarckian genetics, which is really fascinating because you, if you change your genes now through your life, through basically lifestyle changes and positive things or, or negative can be both, those new sort of traits can also be passed on so to your kids. So it's, it, it just gives you this broader picture of like, you know, if I'm really healthy and I go to the gym and I, and I become like a really health, uh, healthy person, let's just say physically for, for argument's sake, some of those traits 
can be passed to your children, they will be more inclined to be more physically uh, developed, for example, than uh, if you were just lazy on the couch all day and not just the genes that were passed on, which is quite a fascinating concept, certainly to me. And, um, and that's also where the sort of, con the, and I think this kind of harks back to Max chat as well, is like the importance of sports and exercise when it comes to dealing with what she calls her dementors, you know, these, these tough times in our lives. Uh, what, what are the tools we have? One of them is identifying that that's one of our sort of traits that we have. Maybe we tend towards a bit of anxiety or, or have you know, a bit of depression because of genetics, because of our um, environment, because of whatever it may be. But there all are really great tools. And one of those, uh, which is really easily accessible, is exercise. And I think that's really something we totally agree with as well. Hey, Gareth. Yeah, absolutely, Craig. I, I've, always, I've always thought that like exercise is one of the, the cheapest and best tools uh, that, that, that there is when it comes to clearing your mind and, and dealing with any kind of, I don't know, just any kind of issues that you have, you know, especially, especially things that, that, are, that are bothering you uh, from a sort of psychological point of view, you know, and, um, and, and the, the other good thing about exercise as well is that it kind of like parlays itself into everything that you're doing you know in, in into other parts of your life as well you know like it, it builds up strength and it builds up strength not just physically but it builds up strength mentally and then that that gives you confidence and then that allows you to uh, maybe be a little bit better in your career or a better better person deal with more difficult situations or whatever the story is so there's so many like byproducts of actually doing this exercise that I think it's, it's such an important thing that we all kind of need to weave into our day-to-day -day lives. And, um, you know, and, and, and it doesn't just need to be going to the gym. There, there's so many other things. And it's also not just that hour in the gym. It's actually the 23 other hours that are in the day that are just as important, but there's also other things that really help with the self care that, um, that Mac tries to kind of instill and teach her clients, doesn't she, Craig? Totally. Well, the thing is, you know, is first of all, like how much self-care do you actually practice and, and is it part of your daily routine? And I think that's the other thing, uh, an aspect of that, you know, is I think there are lots of different tools, as you mentioned, for that. Um, but the, the big thing is that it actually does become part of your routine because we often striving and working and you know, want to do personal growth and, and all these things, but we forget, okay, what about just sitting with myself and being present and meditating, connecting um, with our family and our, and our friends and our internal family, um, having fun? Uh, and, uh, and, and how do we fit these into our lives is the real question. Are you fitting it in? And is self-care an, an important part of your life? Because these small little things um, can build up unless it becomes a habit, unless you, you're trying to take care of little things so that small little um, problems in your mind or uh, that you're ruminating over, they don't become these really big, uh, scary things eventually, but it takes a day-to-day -day sort of process. And, and that's exactly what you said, Gareth, is like the other 23 hours, um, not just I've hit the gym, now I'm all good. It's like, how are you checking in uh, elsewhere? And I think um, those small steps and the simple steps are often the most important thing. And I think that's part, a big sort of drive of Mac as well is like, let's go back to basic. Let's keep things simple and don't over overcomplicate uh, the way you look at your, your life and don't overcomplicate the process of looking after yourself. Just keep it simple, breathe, walk, eat well. You know, these are things we can all do and it all adds to that personal growth, doesn't it, Gareth? Yeah, Craig, it does. And I think this is like, this is one of the most important lessons and reminders for people is literally keep it simple. Seriously, you, you don't need the extravagant stuff. You don't need to be smashing the weights. You don't need to be going to CrossFit. You don't need the protein shakes. You, you, you don't need that stuff. Seriously, go for a walk, clear your mind, uh, sit in silence, drink lots of water, eat lots of vegetables, seriously like like just really keep it simple start there you know what i mean like like don't don't overcomplicate it and and then go into that other stuff because that other stuff is super cool as well but mm. you know don't you don't have to start there that's for sure because you also need to enjoy the journey and the process and everything like that and and one thing which uh she said was like 
take pride in your small steps, be in your little steps, you know, like, I think that's really, really cool. Be mm. in your little steps. And, um, you know, that's, that's part of you. That's one of your personalities, you know, be, be that little person and, and enjoy being that little person and take pride in that. So, um, really powerful stuff. You know, there's so many things around growth and, and these sort of things. And, you know, the, the evolution of growth, um, often happens in places, uh, where we don't necessarily feel good or comfortable. And, you know, you hear this all the time and it sounds very cliche, but it's so true. You know what I mean? We have to kind of, we just have to get out of our little boxes and we have to branch out and, uh, try things that, that challenge us on, on so many different levels, you know, physically, mentally, um, and you know what I mean? Like all, all things that like, you know, they make you feel kind of like awkward in a way as well, you know, like just go and do those things. Cause you're going to find these spaces in you that you didn't quite realize existed. You know, you might even find these other cool little personalities that you put to the side over the years and, and that are wanting to come out. So, so go and do those things and, and really challenge yourself in those, uh, in those sort of difficult difficult places and um yeah i mean just uh, such important stuff hey craig and you know we we actually uh one of the things that she also talks around uh you know around these tools and and things that to make ourselves better is communication isn't it yeah totally gareth and i think you know we've we've often harp on about communication but there, there are different ways to frame communication indeed and i think it just starts with that self-talk uh and, and how you actually, what is your internal dialogue with your, the way you perceiving things in your day? And uh, I think it's really important to just open up to the idea that sometimes the way we speak to ourselves is not great and sometimes harder than you would speak to someone else, you know? Um, and then if, if you sort of worked on some of that self-talk, then uh, work, work on listening to others and just take giving them space. And, you know, Gareth and I had this conversation recently is like, when you're really listening and being present with someone else, you just start to see like why they they do the things they do and the way that they are behaving might be because of all these things that you didn't even know about. So it's just these small things in communication um, that we can gain this sort of perspective of, of others. And it's, it's really fascinating, but you know, one way to grow and, and this is, you know, obviously very um, topical at the moment. Uh, and, and Gareth and I really have um, some strong intuitions about uh, these uh, these tools uh, of of growth, and one of them that Mac discusses in the conversation is the use of psychedelics. Now, obviously, we we discuss it there, and there's there's a whole bunch of caveats that are that should be understood. But for the sake of the chat uh, today, it's just like it's so important to to try different things. And and obviously, when when the psychedelic side of the, of, of the world becomes more open and it's and it's legalized and what have you, it's going to be a really interesting tool because what they have the ability to do is that they turn this massive light on your own mind, the way you think and your old patterns. And I think it's really fascinating to understand like, okay, let's, how can we use these tools that are from mother nature um, that are really powerful to explore this landscape of our own minds? If you're into uh, self growth and self uh, inquiry, Hey Gareth. Yeah, for sure. Craig, I think, you know, we're slowly moving towards that. Do you know what I mean? Like uh, people are s slowly starting to understand that like plant medicine is actually a good thing. And we're, we're getting reminded, you know, that this stuff has existed for centuries and, and people mm. have used it in like tribes and stuff for centuries to, to do things and to, like, you know, explore their minds and, and whatever else they've used it for. Um, and now it's sort of coming back into the light because we kind of seem to have lost ourselves a little bit along the way and like what it, like what it means to be human and, and what we actually do. And we've, you know, got taken over by industries like say the pharmaceutical industry, like throw certain medicines at us and whatever. And, mm -hmm. you know, we're like, actually, you know what, we don't actually need that stuff because everything that we actually need already exists in nature. And, um, you know, we're just seeing it, I guess, in the start now, with, say CBD products, not that CBD is a, a psychedelic, but uh, CBD is, um, you know, a plant medicine and it helps in, in certain ways for, for lots of like amazing things. So it's in that sort of spectrum of things. And I mm. think uh, it's important for us to, to start in investigating and researching ourselves what these are all about um, and maybe under the right environment, uh, go and explore them, you know, because you will 
be a different person as a result. Like 100%, you'll be a different person. You'll find uh, and you'll speak to and you'll hopefully maybe get over some of those shadows or just understand mm -hmm. them better. And I think this is very powerful stuff that, um, you know, once we're in the right place as individuals, it's that next step to go and explore. Uh, mm -hmm. So very powerful. We're living in such fortunate times. And uh, once again, Craig, just, uh, just so much insights that we took from that conversation, which is just mm -hmm. what a great place for us to be in, eh? just sit back and listen to people spreading such amazing stories and sharing so much value, isn't it? Totally. And I wish I was half as wise as Mac when I was 25. That's for sure. It's incredible. <laughs> and uh, thank you all for listening with us today. It's been a great chat thinking about all these concepts. We'd love to go back and forth with some of you. If you have any further questions or comments, we always love that. Uh, thanks for listening each week with us. We love having you on this journey along with us. And we just wish you an amazing week and we will chat to you very soon. Cheers, guys. Thanks a lot. Waking at dawn, packing the gear. 